Hello all and welcome to another video in my journey to 1 million gamer score series and with March 2021 done and in the history books it is indeed time for me to bring to you all of the gamer score that I indeed got in that month. Now in this month I must admit there's not as much as I would have liked and I must admit I'm going to blame some of that on the knowledge of learning that a mobile game that has achievements tied to it is going offline on April the 26th and needing to do still a lot in that and grinding a lot in that. If, if, and I say if, I am able to get that completion I will be over the moon but it will take a lot of effort and obviously it's taking time away from playing 360 games but we do have some 360 completions to talk about including my first ever import completions there are a couple of those we've also got a completion that is 11 years in the making to talk about as well so yeah we'll have a little chat about that one and then finally thanks to my true achievement feed I am now in the knowledge that I've achieved an achievement of unlocking 17,000 different individual achievements. That's quite a lot, so I'm obviously very, very pleased. And over the moon about that one. So with that, let's go over to the gaming tab and indeed show you all of the games that I have been playing and all the achievement I've got in the month of March 2021. And we're ready to go in chronological order. And we are starting with Asterix at the Olympic Games. Now this isn't a bad game. It's a 3D platformer. It is a relatively easy completion. And I'm only using the word relatively because it has a lot of collectibles in it. And if you miss them, you may need to backtrack which is not a problem if you finish the game, you can still do that. But unfortunately, on my playthrough, I did miss three or four of the pigeon cages. And that meant, obviously, needing to backtrack. And then I still couldn't find a couple of them. And then I needed to use a guide, which I found on YouTube, which fortunately fortunately enough for me was a complete playthrough with all collectibles in it there are four different types of collectibles there's shields there is obviously the pigeons themselves these little wood cages you have to smash break open and then obviously it frees the pigeon because you have to free 50 pigeons there's also magnesia and glue to collect as well but they're pretty much unmissable they're quite obvious as to where they are as you're progressing through the story mode so yeah that added around about honestly it was about two to three hours on to my completion time unfortunately it's should or it could take about eight to ten hours to do i say 10 to 12 hours is a more fair estimate however as i say because of my collectibles whoa it took me around about the 15 hours mark now a lot of them you can't miss they are there some of them are on paths that you do not need to go down but obviously if you explore every nook and cranny you will find them i mean if you want to make sure you get it all done in one playthrough that you can follow a playthrough of the game but obviously it's quite a lengthy game so bear that in mind as i say there are two other types of collectibles the other grindy achievement yes a hundred thousand helmets found as you're progressing through the game every 10 percent basically unlocks an achievement which is there's a hundred percent complete there and there you'll notice there's 90 and obviously 80 70 and so on so what i do is i would play through the game until you get to see that 90 percent completion and there's these little games within sort of the open world where you have to hit certain romans colored in a certain order to then sort of make this jukebox play a tune and open up and reveal whatever's inside for you to either progress in the story or if you've already done it once a little reward so if you hit every time you kill a roman you get helmets obviously break every smash and break every smash break every destructible object smash that up as you're playing through they'll all have helmets in them as well but when you're in that sort of little game mode if you're beating up the romans and you're doing them out of color order then you have to restart from the beginning so just wail on them and they will keep respawning and that way you'll find yourself in a spot where you can eventually get all of the helmets that you need out of the game. So that's what I did when I hadn't unlocked the achievements for 50,000 and 100,000. I still need to do it. I wasn't far off it by the time I got to what was probably around about 95% of the game complete when I went for those achievements. But that would take a little bit of time. So a lot of it is through adventure mode. But when you're going through adventure mode and you're playing the events, you then unlock the ability to do those events outside side of the adventure mode in what is olympic mode and each one you'll have to beat at medium or higher now it says higher but it's not that difficult to be honest with you a lot of it is just button bashing and timing something like obviously throwing the javelin above there 
and and there's a hammer throwing one as well you have to time that a little bit but there's there's a sprint as well there's a chariot mode a lot of that again is it's not they're not difficult mini games as such the 100 hit combos could be tricky but there's one of those mini games where you have to beat a certain amount of romans before your opponent does or is it more romans than your opponent does in a certain time limit that's right so that is where i eventually got that it took me a few attempts to get it that achievement there is going to be a bit tricky but as you'll see 100g is not not uh not worth turning down is it for one achievement and of course getting a completion you wouldn't do but there's 50 as well 50 wasn't tough i think 50 was one of the very first ones i unlocked there it is yeah it's the second one i looked because there was a section where if you don't finish the mini game you can just keep having a romans respawn so i decided to go for it there i couldn't quite get the 100 but i did in that mini game i forget the name of the mini game have to be honest if you tug of war that was easy that's just bashing a button i think it might have been king of the arena might have been king of the arena but yeah you want to do it in this in this little mini game where you have to obviously beat more there's two of you in there there's you in the computer and you just have to beat more than the computer does in a set time limit to win the game and even if you don't you, you, you're going for the combo so yeah, the combo 100 combo is tricky and obviously collectibles can make this one a bit of a bugbear but overly not an awful game relatively enjoyable but it can grind on you a little bit because a lot of it is the same. But quite fun, quite fun and not difficult to do. And above that, when it loads, above that, Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. My first import completion. Obviously, this is the Ultimate Mega Drive Collection released in the UK. So if you haven't done the PAL version, then it's exactly the same achievement list. So I've already done it in the past, so it was just like stacking it very easy completion some of the games can be cheesed by cheat codes i would suggest looking those up on trueachievements.com again some of them are just play all titles watch every video unlock everything this is the hardest achievement in the game which is beating dr robotnik's mean bean machine but you can use a level select code to go straight to the last level and then when you beat that last level it will then unlock the achievement all of the games do have sta save states so remember to use those to your advantage in certain games like perhaps sonic spinball getting 10 is that 10 million points there you might want to save because obviously if you lose all your three lives then you'll have to start again so if you get to say i don't know two or three million without losing a life why not make a save state so if you lose one quickly after you can just pick it up from the three million that you've got and again like when you get to half a million so on i think i did that to be sure but you know you don't have to finish the level you just have to get the points fatal labyrinth progress to the fifth level i think i need to use a guide for that one that is quite tricky so there is a guide which i believe is linked on the true achievements website for that individual achievement as well east will obtain the combat suit and complete mission two again you make sure to use save states every time you get so far without losing a life just quickly make a save state and then when you do lose it you can just pick it up again as well this one kid camellia one i think you may need a guide for that one as well it's not as straightforward as to where to find the maniacs but it isn't difficult as i say you just mainly guides for save states for certain ones like complete the first level that is and continues just make some safe states to be sure i think actually holy water beyond oasis was the one that i needed i certainly needed a guide for because finding that was just so random as to where it is in fact i very much would suggest using a guide for that one and very much using a safe state for that one as well alien storm reaching mission three there was a level select code for that there is a spot at the beginning of level one where you can just farm those Again, view all artwork. Comic Zone, another cheat code you can enter for that. It pretty much will just unlock the achievement straight away. Bonanza Brothers reaching 40,000 points. That one, well, if you finish the first level very quickly, you'll be very close. I was kept finishing the first level and not quite making it. But there is a timer. The timer is just points based. If the timer runs out, you won't die. You just won't get points when you finish the level. So you can actually just stand there and complete continually shoot an enemy wait for him to sort of come back alive again because it doesn't kill them it just dazes and makes them lie on the floor wiggling their feet in the air so yeah just wait for him to get up shoot him again and you can farm points out like that so not difficult at all but again yeah super thunder blade i think hold it put it on hard hold the helicopter in the very top left hand corner of the screen and then when you get to the top down vertical scrolling bit then you have to do something again safe states and that will be your friend again as as well as will be the flicky one here 
unless you're an absolute pro at that game, I would suggest save states for that one as well. Think things below it, like the Golden Axe ones, they're absolutely easy. Just read the description and do it. Alex Key collects a thousand currency, not difficult at all. Hundred thousand points by or higher by the end of the first level, all would be. I think you have to do that without pretty much dying. You can take a hit, but you don't want to die. Unlock Rue the Kangaroo. When you get to the level and there is Rue and a clown at the end of the level as the boss, make sure you only kill the clown. If you kill Rue before you kill the clown, you will not get Rue as an unlockable character. Again, do you know what? The rest of these are now are the descriptions there for you. They're not difficult. Eat 200 fish, you can, they do respawn, so you can once you find a batch of them, you can just keep going backwards and forwards. However, it's quite annoying, it would take a time. But there we go, yes, not a difficult completion. We'll just take a little bit of time, that's all. I can't remember exactly how much, around about five to six hours, probably. Okay, Superstars V8 Racing. I, I don't mind a racing game, I'm just not very good at them. This, you know, I was surprised at how much fun this was. All I will say to you here is that a lot of the, the achievements, just read the description and it is quite, you know, simple. Win a race without using mana transmission there. Again, that's not difficult if you know the trick to do. Win 10, I was going to, there's some online ones here. I was very fortunate my online, or my boosting buddy Ross was able to help me. Bo ho ho. Great channel, link in the description. Please check him out. But yeah, you need a, a boosting buddy for those. He's obviously going to help you out indeed. You can just do one lapse on a short circuit and get that knocked out in no time. Completing the race scenario challenges isn't difficult, but if you want to get all the achievements out of this game, you will need to platinum platinum them and that was beyond me so i didn't but i didn't do those but you know it's one of those games i may return to at a later date but anyway the main tip for this one is to go into the options and tur turn off the penalties so when you're doing all the championships you can cut corners and that will just get you ahead of the pack obviously put it down to easy in, in the case of some achievements however some are tied to certain difficulties i mean i'm not very good at racing games but i won the uh, the championship with that driver on hard difficulty by being able to cut the corners. Now, when you're doing a championship season, you want to kind of skip the the two the two practice events at the, at the beginning. Just press Y. However, take a note of what time the cars are doing the laps in in those practice sessions because that's pretty much the time you're going to have to beat when you do your qualifying because you want to be on the front of the grid. And if you're cutting corners again on the track because you've turned off the penalties, then that you know that makes qualifying pole a lot easier i do believe there is an achievement for for finishing polers as, as well so yeah i was i say i'm not very good at this i was able to do the hard difficulty there is a one for doing a championship with the very top difficulty as well i haven't got that but yeah cut corners and you'll get quite a lot out of that that's 780 i did put some serious time into it to get that 780 out of it though so be warned about that one as well and here we are tmnt 1989 rk this is delisted so unfortunately you cannot buy this but I was missing two achievements out of this and again my boosting buddy Ross we decided to go for it we decided to go for it and the two achievements that I was missing was defeat Shredder without being turned into a regular turtle there's a solution on true achievements which works an absolute charm and this isn't that difficult and I wish I'd read it back in the day and I would have got that so for that one yeah all you have to do is you have to start a a local game and have two controllers uh, press start on the second controller after you've started your game die with controller one play it all the way through the game with controller two and then when you get to shredder beat him down to the point of where the clone and the real shredder are both had their helmets knocked off and that way you know you can bring in controller one and finish the job off so actually that's not exactly accurate you do need to be alive with controller one when you enter the screen with shredder if you don't then you won't be able to get the achievement so yes sorry play through the game with controller two when you get to just before shredder with crank bring back in controller one so it's alive when you enter shredder let it die straight away so you don't get turned into a regular turtle and then f do all of that work that i said with player two Again, once the helmets are off, the real Shredder and the clone Shredder, and the Shredders then will not take a lot of hits. Quickly bring back in Controller 1 and beat up the Shredders. 
achievement will unlock. But anyway, defeat Shredder in an Xbox Live co-op game and live to tell the tale. The reason why this one is difficult is because it limits you to exactly 20 lives per player. So obviously I was very very fortunate that Ross also had the game as well. So he was able to help me there. And we it took us a few, a few runs, learning a few tricks, learning where the enemies are, learning little tricks on how to beat the boss. Obviously Donatello is your man to be because he has the range. One of us was Donatello, one of us was Leonardo. And we were trying to do it playing along side each other all of the way and it was just that one night i said to him when he had to go i said would you mind just getting us getting as far as you can alongside of us and once you die i will then continue on on my own if that's all right and he said yeah sure no worries and we he blasted us through all the way to the sewer level and then i got very close to beating it but we had an, had another go and we got it done so the the trick is basically to let let one player do all of the work and you preserve all of your lives and after a bit of practice of knowing the game as well you, you'll be able to get it done but as you'll see the date on that is 2021 and if we go back to my first achievement it was done in 2010 so i absolutely adore this game so i was just really really pleased to get that done and outside of well I would have said these two achievements, but I then learned that trick there. So this is literally the toughest achievement in the game, if you ask me. Despite having a higher unlock rate than that, maybe people just don't know the trick. That is difficult if you do not know the trick. If you try to do that legit, or have done that legit, respect to you. Okay, so above that, Pocket Bike Racer. This is a Burger King game. And there is, as you'll see, only 200G tied to this. Obviously, this is one of my this is my other import completion. Not a difficult completion, however, there is one online achievement. That one online achievement is to simply complete at least 25 Xbox Live ranked matches. Or oh, sorry, Xbox Live matches don't have to be ranked. If if you can find someone, then you'll get this done easily. If you haven't got a boosted partner or know somebody else that's got the game, then it's going to be really, really tough just to find somebody who's willing to do one race, let alone 25. You can limit them down to one lap. The really annoying thing is every time you finish, you have to go out of it and back into it again and start all over again and setting it up. But once the person has set it up once, let that person keep setting it up because it will remember what they've what they've done their settings as. So yes, Ross has this game, boosted buddy again. Get plenty of mentions here. So yeah, I do owe a lot to him for getting a lot of online achievements this month and last month, certainly this year. But uh, you win a multiplayer match you can do against yourself, completing all the tournaments. You don't have to win them, you just have to complete them. Uh, that one was a little bit tricky. One of the, Only one of the tracks is tight for time on that, and that's this construction yard one. But achieve first place in hardcore racing, that's just there's no power-ups to shoot opponents in. The cone trial, go through, yeah, go through cone gates. Battle Royale, you don't even have to race the right way around. First of 10 hits wins. And all of, all of the other random achievements just happens. Like, I didn't have to do a stoppy for 0.5 seconds. I accidentally did one going for all of the other. Did a wheelie for two seconds. The game actually glitched. I got stuck in a wall and thought I was doing a wheelie. But apparently that just even unlocks to regular gameplay without really trying to get bashed around and things like that. So, yeah, winning tournaments. Finish all the tournaments. Win a race with each of the BK characters. That's not all of the characters, just the ones to do with Burger King. Jump for more than than 50 meters i think that might be cumulative i'm not sure because when it unlocked i certainly didn't jump 50 meters but again it's not a difficult completion i believe the other two are but it's just that's going to hold a lot of people back because again people need to have this game be online at the same time so if you know a boosted partner that's going to make that one much much easier okay digimon all-star rumble so we yeah we've done a couple of playthroughs of the story mode because there's an achievement for beating the story mode with all of the characters. You have I think it's three or four characters in the battle mode that you can use, but if you play through story mode, you will unlock more. So I decided to pretty much go through the story mode and then do these achievements here battle mode more than 20 times with a certain character in certain arenas more than 10 times. There you go, cleared story mode. And then fight on stages a certain amount of times, as well as do certain modes 10 times as well. There's also 5 hours and 10 hours of gameplay, but if you go into story mode and idle the controller, then obviously the time will add up there. There's one for 50 hours, but I'm not quite 
sure I'm going to put my Xbox through that yet. Bear in mind, I'm going to have to revisit this game. So there's quite a lot of this you can get out of easy. It's a tough completion because you have to get all of the cards. The cards are random. And you get a hell of a lot of gameplay in order to find them all or get them all. So that one is going to, going to make this one a tough completion and certainly lengthy at that. But just 390 out of what is sort of a... It's like Power Stone, but without picking up... Power Stone on the Dreamcast, that, but without picking up interactive parts of the level you use your own sort of power up so yeah i've got the 10 hours achievement some of that was done through idling but outside of that i probably put about uh, 10 hours of gameplay into this anyway so we're about 20 hours into doing the 50 hours achievement okay nothing on this one this is the one where we are me and ross are also working towards getting the last achievement out of this each as well and that is going to be tough it's, it's doing the survival mode or normal difficulty onwards so yeah, as you can see, if we can get this one done, this one's going to be a 10 hour, 10 hour, 10 year in the making completion done as well. Okay, so above that, we've got, we've got Girl Fight. This one's actually backwards compatible, but I did use my Xbox 360 to play. So I was just, when we was going for this one, I, I mentioned to Russell this game called Girl Fight. It's, it's meant to be a really easy 400G completion, but it's got one online, rank, online achievement. It was like, ah, oh, let's get it then and let's do it. So... We both bought the game and knocked out the one online achievement, which is win three consecutive rank matches online. We actually, yeah, we see while we was doing this, we thought we'd we'd, we'd focus on a, a few other achievements as well, which is why the five percent health less is win a match with less than five percent health achievements there. So get one person to pummel the other down, and then obviously come back and, and win the match. Win five rounds on four psi meter. Just don't hit the triggers, by the way. But yes, three consecutive rank matches online. The good thing about rank matches online is you you're, you're in in a little page, and it'll tell you who you're fighting below, and you have to then press A to ready up. And if you were to get paired against somebody that isn't your boosting partner, you could just back out of it. However. However, there's no one playing this game. So if you find a boosting partner, the good chances are when you come around to doing it, you're going to be the only two people online. So you will match up against each other. But just in case you don't, there is that that can be done. So after i done it, Ross did it, and we also farmed this out. And I say we farmed this out. It made it a bit more interesting actually having someone to talk to because you can do all of the achievements in this game, I believe, with two controllers and just using player versus player. So blocking the opponent's grab, a grab is pressing Y, and if you press Y after them at the right time, you'll block the grab. And again, five matches with nothing but punches, block a thousand strikes. We was also farming that out as we were, as we were doing the boosting for the ranked ones as well. And then after that, we did carry on for a bit after we got our ranked matches and just boosted everything because you can select stages and obviously you can select who you want to be in in player versus player through the story mode every time you beat the story mode you unlock another per player you can only be one person when you start story mode and then you unlock somebody else when you beat it with them and so on but all of the characters are available when you're doing doing multiplayer so you can you can what's the word you can sort of uh, manufacture there it is you can manufacture this achievement out without actually having to play through story mode unlocking all the characters so yeah just make a note of who you've been so that the other person has faced them and then just flip through the arena so just change that every time and you'll get that one done no trouble again match nothing but kicks strike the first blow in 25 rounds 10 matches with nothing but throws i've already said that's the y button 25 rounds without taking any damage if you again if you're boosting this or just using the two controllers gonna be easy with five rounds with a throw from behind you literally have to press up or down to sidestep you can circle around somebody just make sure they're within within a throw away from being defeated and then just press y from behind you've got to do that 10 times the seismic fish you will need to buy with what is called combats well i thought they were called combat points but they're called combats or combits yes then go to the store th the in-store thing once you build up the sort of combits and buy the seismic fist and then again make sure they're beat down and select it when you're selecting your abilities and then when they're low enough on health you just have to press the left or right trigger depending which one you've assigned it to you'll punch the floor and if they're close enough to you you will beat them just make sure you do 10 rounds with that as well this is where you'll need to build up a few combats in order to be able to buy two level three PSI amps and finish a match. Again, you don't have to win the match, you just have to finish the match. So you'll need quite a few combats. Uh, level three combats are 50,000 each, the ones that I applied, and there's two below it. So I would imagine 20,000, 30,000, you're probably going to need, yeah, 
about 200,000 combits overall, but once you're working towards a lot of the other achievements, you will get that. Travel over 10,000 meters in battles, that just happens. Win 100 matches, so I started playing through campaign mode after we've done our boosting session multiple times, just to experience the game, and again, winning 100 matches. If you're just, you can just do it with two controllers, and but even if just the campaign on normal, you might lose a couple and need a retries but it's just not difficult at all earning a thousand bars and performing ten thousand striking attacks are the grindy ones which will take a bit of time but i learned a trick thanks to true achievements and fortunately fortunately i have a turbo pad what you do is you make the turbo pad player one and you turbo pad it to the punch button and then what you want to do is plug in a regular controller as controller two Wait for the match to start. You can't block before the match and have it accept the press. You need the match to start and then press block if you make what's said. Block is B. So once the match has started, you can put infinite timer on. If you're doing player versus player, you know, set the timer to infinite. Elastic band up, controller 2, B button, which make it permanently block. And then turbo pad, the X button, which is the punch button. The striking attacks don't have to connect. Block is counts you just have to perform them and uh, basically leave for a couple of hours while you do something leave it on overnight or whatever wake up in the morning you'll have your 10,000 striking attacks and even if your bars are full it still registers your bars as filling up so they will both unlock in the time that uh, you, you've left it running for if you've left it long enough not a difficult completion just one online one which you'll need some help boosting with and obviously you'll need a little bit of time I te I say technically sort of one sitting obviously I, I got it to the state where I need those last two achievements and did my controller set up and then and then woke up in the morning and it was done so I mean if you do do it all in one sitting about 5-6 hours if you use all the tricks 5-6 hours not tough at all but uh, yeah just one online achievement Fatal Inertia. This is a it's like wipeout in the sense of what the crafts are and where the power ups are, but the tracks are a lot wider. The tracks are a little bit like Star Wars Pod Racer, I would say. So there's a little bit of a fusion of both. Tough as now's completion this one, because the difficulty on this ramps up quite quite a lot. Now I, I just my last achievement I got was a hundred events. 100 events and I just did one of the easy championships over and over again which I knew I was pretty much going to win all of the four races if not three out of four every time so I just farmed it out that but uh, that obviously took a long while a lot of them are for or the, or a lot of the ones that I've got are for using certain power-ups in a way or knocking off being attacked by power-ups in a certain way. Break boost, you have to, while you're holding A to go, a break boost, you sort of hold X, it obviously puts the break on, and then when you release X, you do a little boost. So if any weapons ever attached to you, you want to shake them off, that's how you do a break boost. And obviously, I did that when I got hit by a rocket. 10 magnets, there is a weapon which fires 10 magnets at once and sticks to your craft, and you can do that. Obviously, 50 events came while I was trying to boost 100. There's also one for 200, I might might boost that there's also two other styles of race to win which i am actively boosting so there'll be a couple of more achievements in this the next update a split screen quick race against human pilot obviously two controllers get that done and then win a certain amount of races in certain class race craft you can do quite easily the skirmish series is the second series i've only literally the first two even the third one is, t is tough and there's no, it's about nine of them. Honestly, the, the difficulty just ranks up. So yeah, 20 combat races I've done. I'm working on magnet races and knockout races at the moment. So yeah, perfectly timed break boost at the start of the race. It's, it's exactly how I said to do a break, break boost earlier. But you have to obviously do it at the start of the race. But uh, you have to time it with pressing X when it says two and then release it just before three. And, and yeah, and obviously you'll get that. But again, these I didn't even didn't even try to do they just happen you know these these weapon ones here you know and there's you can also remove weapons by doing a barrel roll as well there's some that barrel roll you need to either double tap left trigger or right trigger and you'll do a barrel roll in that direction so yeah a few more here seven opponents with one smoke bomb if you get one at the start straight away you'll get that i said i just i just didn't try to get the offensive ones and i just got them as well that's the very first series the first two series are not difficult and then the difficulty starts to go up third one's tricky and i, I could probably do it with a bit of time and patience and learning but yeah not an easy completion one to dodge if you're a completionist 
I thought I'd better boost up my game score this month. So when Ross told me that Castle No Escape had a Windows 10 stack, I was on it. This one will take you about, it can take you as quick as five minutes, maybe 10 minutes if you're unlucky in finding an orb. You need to be all three characters at the beginning. Everything else is pretty much you will find it. You need to battle something and avoid an escape and attack. So when you're in a battle, just keep tapping A and You'll, you'll avoid an attack the one that might cause you a little bit of trouble and double your five minutes to ten minutes is if you can't find an orb but when you do find an orb press a on it and you get an achievement for using it correctly and there's an achievement for not using it correctly basically if you press a on it too many times it breaks so once you find it press a once to use it and use it correctly keep mashing a and eventually it'll break and there's your second achievement. There's your second achievement to do with the orb, but not not difficult at all. Again, five to ten minutes. This can be done. Very very basic and simple game. And the game that is responsible for holding me up this month in playing a lot more 360 stuff. But this game is going offline on April the 26th. So I've absolutely been hammering it this month and been trying to get this done. So some that I have unlocked this month, you'll see where where do the 2021s disappear. Where do they disappear? There we go, 2019. So if I'd have kept on at this game and just played it a little bit, this wouldn't be so much of a chore to do now. And I say chore because I'm going to have to put a hell of a lot of time of it if I do want to try and unlock all of the chimps in this game. I'll show you them at the bottom in a minute. But uh, didn't have that. That's That was, shouldn't have been difficult, but I didn't do it. And again, I didn't have that. That shouldn't be difficult. Just need to do that. Again, these the geese just playing it. You need finding an active group is key to getting these done. Obviously, it's it's a bit difficult now, but there are they are still out there. I'm in a very good group at the moment, so I've been very fortunate that I can able to hammer these out. It's a lot more generous than giving out coins, and I was able to get that done without relative fuss. Reached the first league, I was upgrading my pins, and eventually I got there. That one isn't the ball lake. That one is the ball lake if you keep on top of upgrading the pins that you use. Again, that will come in time, obviously. I still have some progression from when I played it a couple of years ago. But I got promoted to the highest league and I had about eight shots before I eventually got to the highest league. That That is hard. And people have been playing this for a long time and have high, very high level pins. But the amount of times I got close and then, and then fell away, I was just so, so pleased to get it. But putting in the time and effort into just playing horde mode in my active group and just playing a, a pvp and opening up crates and stuff to get my own pins having your pins leveled up is massively key to getting that but the ones i'm going for and hoping to get before it closes on april the 26th i've graded pins to max level which is getting it to level that's going to take that is if anything that might be tougher than that because out of the stuff that I have to do there, I've reached the highest versus league. A thousand horde ways, if I haven't done it, isn't far off. A thousand versus battles is what could do me. I've worked out, including today, the day that I'm, I'm recording this, I need to win 27 a day to get to a thousand before April the 26th, where, where I'm at now. I've done more than 27 today, so I'm a little bit ahead of myself, but I'm going to keep that figure in my head. And I'm going to try and do it. Reach max player at level 20. Every time you upgrade your pins, you get XP. I'm quietly confident I can do that. I've got a few pins to fire uh, away at and upgrade already, but I'm just sort of stocking them all up because I still need a lot of XP to get to that top level. But as I say, I'm quietly confident I can do that, but I might just keep stocking them up and wait till I've got my 1,000 versus battles because... Because that will make that one a little bit quicker. But yeah, I'm just, can I do it? Can I do it? It's going to be a tough slog, but I'm hoping I can do it. And it's quite surprising that that is actually higher percentage unlocked than these two here. But there we go. Defeating 100,000 pins, obviously, that might take time as well. I just wish there were some stats on telling you how many pins you defeated and how many horde waves you've done. You can look on your profile and see how many versus battles you've done. That's how I know how many... I still need to do but fingers crossed we can get that done but uh, yes this game is has been responsible for me not playing as much 360 and one and series x stuff as i normally do because i want to get this done before it goes offline if possible because obviously we can never get that game a score again and i can never get that ne never get that completion if i don't do it now so for a quick quick update we've gone over half an hour because boy can i talk 
But uh, yes, there, again, there's, there's been no no Xbox One completions, and I know a lot of people come here for that. But I, I I think I touched or said this in the last video. I am planning a mega month because I want to get I want to beat my PB for most games scored in a month, which I think is forty four thousand, and I want to have a fifty thousand month. So I'm stocking up games, I'm stocking up games, and there's going to be a mammoth month. And hopefully, hopefully, I can get fifty thousand in a month. If I can stock up the games, I may pull the trigger on it in June. But if I get the games, I might do it sooner, or unfortunately, it might be later if I can't. But uh, I reckon I've got nearly thirty thousand worth already. So fingers crossed that will be coming soon. That'll be coming soon because we really want to get get uh, get to that million sooner rather than later, as quick as possible. And uh, I must admit, I am playing a lot of 360, and that is holding up. And I will continue to play a lot of 360 because I really do. You may also see in future videos actually a lot of 360 that aren't completions, just because I want to play games, I want to play through them, and experience some of this backlog I've got, which is absolutely humongous. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time to wrap up this video and say thank you very much for watching. I hope this has helped. Any questions, chuck them in the comment section below. I do answer all comments. Again, thank you for watching, and as always, please do. Take care.